When we look at planet Earth from space, we see one piece of the vast universe which God creates, just one planet in all of creation, with one human race. As Christians, we believe that God's love is the only thing powerful enough to hold us all together, to heal our damaged environment, and to reconcile our conflicts. Those of us who live in the Diocese of New York live in a great crossroads of cultures and religions. The opportunities for Episcopalians to live our faith and show God's hospitality are remarkable. We are diverse and international, and we need each other. As Episcopalians, we're called to be certain that the good news, as we understand it, is communicated with clarity and conviction. And we discern our calling day by day. People from every corner of the Anglican Communion are in the pews of our parishes in the Diocese of New York. We all learn together and seek the truth of God's will, each from our own God-given perspective. Our diversity gives us the wonderful opportunity to live within the broad reach of God's embracing arms of love. Just as each one of us understands God differently, so we welcome all who seek God. We are people of every age, race, background, and ethnicity. Our congregations and their members hold theological and political views that range from the very conservative to the very liberal. Our members include the very wealthy, the very poor, and everyone in between. Our worship spans from the most simple to the most elaborate, from traditional to contemporary. The mission and focus of our congregations are often radically different, depending on their particular history, location, and tradition. For example, the Anglican tradition of men and boys choirs continues at St. Thomas's Manhattan. This is the only remaining boys choir school in the United States. Good morning, sir. Good to see you. Enjoy your meal. Holy Apostles, also in Manhattan, has a different focus. Its soup kitchen serves meals to 1,500 New Yorkers every day. Jesus told us to feed those who need it, you know, to feed the hungry. And I think that doing what he said communicates his love sometimes better than words can. Anyone who is hungry is welcome. Interestingly and significantly, St. Thomas's is a staunch supporter of Holy Apostles' work. While the first Anglican church in the colonies was established in Jamestown in 1607, the church found a stronghold in early New York. The Diocese of New York was founded in 1785 and originally covered the whole state. Now it includes three boroughs in New York City and seven counties on either side of the Hudson River. Over 64,000 congregants worship in our churches. Living at the crossroads of the world's cultures has brought challenges to New Yorkers. The tragedy of September the 11th, 2001 shook the world, and members of the Diocese of New York were both victims and among the first responders. St. Paul's Chapel, the oldest public building in continuous use in New York City, sat at the foot of the World Trade Center's North Tower. When the Twin Towers fell, St. Paul's Chapel stood undamaged. The next day, I saw the terrible destruction and how quickly St. Paul's became an emergency center for hundreds of rescue workers and volunteers.
Today, Trinity Church Wall Street supports St. Paul's Chapel, both as a worshiping community and as a memorial to those who lost their lives, and to those who worked night and day in rescue and recovery efforts. The Cathedral of St. John the Divine has always been an international gathering place, a crossroads for those seeking God's truth. Just as Christ would welcome all people into his church, the Cathedral's ministry of hospitality demonstrates that we believe all people are God's children, even though we may call God by different names. These aren't easy times. The witness to God's radical love has become ever more difficult. So we live our common life as Christians by focusing on three things. Our worship of Almighty God as revealed in Jesus Christ, the spiritual nurture of our members, and reaching out to the larger community, near and far, to express, both in word and deed, the message of God's abiding love for all the world. At the heart of the church and the diocese is worship. Our foundation is the Book of Common Prayer. The Eucharist is where our communities gather to receive the spiritual food of God's gift to us. We worship in different styles, from cherished traditions in a Gothic sanctuary, to informal gatherings in wooded chapels, from services in sign language to a hip-hop mass. And we worship in 12 different languages. We nurture our faith and our people in many ways, with Christian education for children and adults, active participation of lay people as Eucharistic visitors, Stephen ministers, spiritual directors, and more. New York is also home to monasteries, convents, and the General Theological Seminary. Our chaplains serve in schools, hospitals, prisons, and universities. Our faith calls us to help those in need, the people who live at the margins of society. Through our social justice, outreach, and advocacy, we're taking steps to move from fear and hatred to peacemaking and appreciation. We share concern about the growing disparity of wealth in our nation and in our world, and how it undermines our vision of who we are and how we are as a people. Grassroots programs feed the hungry and house the elderly, the homeless, and help those with AIDS and HIV. One of our programs helps former prison inmates restore themselves to a productive life and brings them back into the community. The diocese is united in supporting the Carpenter's Kids, a program that helps AIDS orphans and touches the lives of literally thousands of children and their communities in the Diocese of Central Tang Yangika in Tanzania. We are actively involved in ecumenical and interfaith dialogue as living examples of people who believe God is bigger than our differences in culture and religious tradition. The plain, simple fact is that as Christian people, we have been commissioned by God to proclaim good news. We live in union with Christ, Christ who said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. That's what we are called to be, alive in Christ, alive in relationship with one another, and alive in fellowship with all of God's people. The differences in our common life enrich and challenge us, but it is in and through them that we catch a glimpse of the glory of the promise that is ours in God's bracing love. A love made fully known to us in Jesus, the hope of the world.